What's going on guys? Today we're gonna to show you how to upload your videos to YouTube, whether it be from your phone or your computer and start making some money with it. Let's go ahead and get into it. So yesterday we actually did a video on how to film and edit. So taking out your camera, we did the GoPro, we talked about a few different things on settings, and we also talked about how to edit through iMovie specifically, just because that's what I used, I found it to be very simplistic. Today we wanna to dive into more of the how do I upload, because it's somewhat of a complicated process, but also very simple, and there's a lot of ways to kind of systemize it to where things are preset, and once you make your first upload, you're really cranking these things out, and it doesn't take much time at all. I upload a lot of my videos from my phone, and I'm gonna show you guys how to in this video, so let's go ahead Head and just jump right in. Let's say you have your video that you have just filmed and edited, and in this case, of course, we're talking iMovie. What we need to do now is export it from iMovie, share project, jumping down here, sharing the file, being the video, and I share it to the desktop. Uh, I just go in 1080p resolution, it works for me, and then I hit next. I'm going to export that to the desktop, you'll see, we'll hit save. And this is going to be a few minute long process. So now this working on this movie exporting to the desktop and we'll talk about how we can even achieve the same results on our phone. Let me go ahead and show you guys how I do that process. Okay, so same thing here. Let's say you're on your channel, you're on your page. I like to use the desktop version through Safari if I'm on my iPhone. It seems to work a little bit better than uploading through the YouTube app for me specifically. So let's go over to YouTube and what I would do if I have the video ready is I would go up here to the upload icon and I would hit it and then you would select files to upload and this is gonna be straight from your camera roll. So let's say you edited this on iMovie on your iPhone and this was one of your projects and you had simply uh, hit this icon down here to save the video because you've just finished editing it. After you hit that icon, you go ahead and you'll see save video. Save video, I would just do the highest, but for this uh, example, so that it will be faster, I'm gonna hit 1080. The highest resolution is what I mean by that. So we'll export this in 1080p, and we'll be right back when that's finished exporting. It's gonna go straight to our camera roll. Okay, the video was just exported to the photo library, so what I would do is I would go to Safari, and we're back on the upload page. I'm gonna refresh it just to make sure we're in the clear. And you hit select file, I hope you can see that. Let me zoom in a little bit. You would hit select file to upload. This is if we're going from the phone, but it's very similar on the computer. And let's just go to uh, recents, and we would hit the video that we just exported, which is five minutes and 15 seconds, or 16, you can see it down there, and hit done. It's asking you to choose if you want just a portion of it or the whole thing. I always just leave that blank and hit choose. That's, I want this whole video. So it's going to compress it and get it prepped for YouTube. The one on the computer is still currently exporting as well from iMovie. Boom. So now, now this is where things get fun. So I actually still handle the majority of my uploads from my phone. I keep in my notes section my descriptions. I pretty much use the same description for all my videos except for the top portion, which I will include any links to products that I am referring to or recommending in the videos. So this has my song information, uh, letting you know that I use some affiliate links in here. It has some Amazon affiliate links to some of my gear. These are the descriptions you'll see in some of my videos, how to find me on social media, um, text me. I like to fish with a lot of my subscribers and do some unique giveaways inside of my text platform, etc. So this is my description. What I typically do is start a new note for this video, it is how to upload to YouTube and start making money. Boom. I'm going to go ahead and go from my previous notes and I'm going to just get what I need for this next video. I then go back to this video and I want my title and my description all in the notes of my iPhone, making it very simple to finish my upload when it is done. Uh, processing onto the YouTube site. So basically all I'm getting at is within the notes section of my iPhone is where I keep all of my descriptions that I have set up pretty much one time and then just copy and paste for all of my videos. We can talk about this in another video because there's of course so much to it, but basically I've just compiled my social media links, my camera gear through my Amazon affiliate marketing program, which we'll talk a little bit more about in this video, and then uh, things like the music I use, etc. So with that in mind, now going back to YouTube website over here, you'll see that the video is processing. It's actually finished uploading. It just has the processing portion. There's a portion of it that says uploading at first. That bar has completed. So once this finishes processing, the video could go live. But what I like to do, I come over here to where it says public. 
meaning once this video is finished, it's gonna go public and will be available for everyone to see. Well, I don't always want that. I like to take time and complete my title, description, monetization details, also my end screen. You'll see what the end screen is all about here shortly. I like to get all that finished up as well. Custom thumbnail, I always make a custom thumbnail and I'll show you how we do that. We'll go in depth uh, on the few apps I use to add text to my thumbnails. I also have a lot of tags preset. I'm sure you can zoom in and screenshot those. I mean, that's, some people have told me they're irrelevant. Some people have told me they're not. I just choose to have them. Once you set them up once, you can actually leave all of them for the same video and you can change them if you'd like. Uh, so I just leave the same pretty much uh, maxed out number of them. I don't know if it's 50 or 40 or 30, but I've got it maxed out with some relative fishing terms since most of my videos are fishing and I would cater them to the videos you're trying to make. Okay, now before we get too ahead of ourselves, let's let this one finish exporting while this one is just about finished. Share successful. Okay, this video has just been exported from iMovie now to our desktop and let me show you what I do next. Okay guys, so we have finished our edits. We've either exported them to the desktop on our computer from iMovie or we have exported them to our camera roll through the iMovie app on our phone. And you saw how quickly the upload processed to YouTube from the phone, but let me show you what I do on my computer because for some reason, maybe it's the version of iMovie I use uh, the specific software. Whenever I export a video from iMovie, I can't select what type of file I want it to be. So I had to actually download this file converter because if I export my movie from the laptop onto the desktop and I want to upload that to YouTube, it takes for some reason like two hours. It takes way too long because it's not the right file format, but it doesn't allow me to select what I save it as. We've got our videos exported, but they are not the right file type. So I've downloaded what's uh, called a smart converter. This is the app at least, and it's a file converter. So once they're exported from iMovie, I actually drag them over into the smart converter and it asks what type of file I want to convert it to. I'm using a shorter movie just so I can show you this conversion quickly. But what it asks is what type of file do you want to convert it over to? And so you have all these options of all these different files that you would like to convert it to. And MP4 is what is recommended for YouTube. For some reason I can't export as an MP4 from iMovie and I would love some comments on that down below. Uh, maybe it's just this version or because I don't use Final Cut Pro or something more expensive. Anyways, once we get our video exported from iMovie, we then open it with the smart converter and we convert it to MP4. Then it's gonna be the best format for YouTube and also upload much, much faster. With a longer video, this might take some time, maybe let's say, 15, 20 minutes. The upside, of course, being that when you go to upload it to YouTube from your desktop after it's converted, it's not gonna take two hours. It should only take like 10 to 15. So really, it's like 30 minutes total time as opposed to, you know, two hours. All right guys, so you'll see that using this converter didn't take much time at all. And now your video is converted to MP4. So what I do is I hit show file and then it uh, pulls it up in the finder or whatever. And then I just uh, bring that out to the desktop and now I essentially have uh, two videos on my desktop. I end up just deleting them or putting them onto my external hard drive to save space on the computer afterwards. But so here's what we've got. We have our MP4 and we have our movie that we exported from iMovie, which would take longer to upload. Regardless, this next step is the last step I take on the computer and then I do everything from my phone. So let's go ahead and open up Safari. You will see we are on my YouTube homepage. We will go to the top right and hit this plus button over here. We will hit upload video. Don't ask me why I haven't switched that from Ducati yet. For me, whenever I'm uploading on the computer, I like to upload with the classic. You can go up here and hit upload with the classic uploader. And I just say the new uploader is harder to use. YouTube is asking me why I want to use the classic uploader rather than their new one. And uh, so anyways, this is what it normally looks like for me when I go to upload a video. I'm on my channel and I hit select file to upload. So essentially when I go to upload on YouTube, there's two of the same video file. There is the video that I edited in iMovie and there's the MP4 which I converted. So you want to click on the MP4 because that's the one that's going to upload faster and be better for YouTube and you're going to go ahead and hit choose. Now it's going to start uploading and this one because it's so short will probably take little to no time at all. So it's saying about two minutes to upload this video to YouTube. Now if this was like a 10 or 15 minute long video, I would expect something within the eight minute to 20 minute range. Okay, now the video is finished and on YouTube ready to go. All you need to do is finish those last minute details like I had said, but I have set it to private, which means I can hit done. Now the video is technically on my channel, but I haven't had it go live yet. So I'm gonna show you what I do to finish up the process of the video right now.
for me, the reason why I put it on private is because most of the time when I edit these and get these finished is not when I want them to go live. I would rather them go live uh, certain days of the week or certain times of the day. For me, I don't think there's a terrible time of day except for maybe like after 10 or 11 p.m. Uh, or before like 6 a.m. Uh, it is very critical when you're thinking about growth to try and get it, uh, try and get your video posted when more people would be readily available to watch it and maybe it would pop up more organically in front of people's faces. So as far as timing goes, I think anytime from roughly 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. you're probably fairly okay. I think as long as you're posting videos consistently, that is the key. Whether it's every day, every other day, every five days, once a week, I think you're fine. You just need to have the long-term vision in mind. Frankly, guys, I sometimes get my YouTube videos finished up at 2 a.m. in the morning. I might finish an edit and I'm not gonna post it exactly then. So I set it to private and then I can post it whenever I want. I can then set it to public and go live on the website uh, the next day, that weekend, uh, at a specific time of day, I can set it to public. And so this is the advantage of doing things that way. I can even get it set up to where it goes live while I'm at work. All I have to do is go on my phone, get on YouTube and hit public and it will post. And so there's many advantages and I think this is kind of a secret that not a lot of people people will talk about. Even though it's hiding in plain sight, there's still quite a few people who have uploaded a lot of videos, myself included. I didn't know about this until maybe uh, 5,000, 10,000 subs. I don't remember exactly when I figured it out, but you can t put it on private or you can even go to scheduled and schedule a specific time. I do like to, once the video goes live, uh, make a pinned comment on it. Uh, that, that helps. I do also like to get back to the people who comment on my videos and I try to do that right as soon as it's posted. So those things help. That's why I don't do these scheduled very often. I, I'm not saying I'm against it. I'll do it. But I like the private idea because then I can set public whenever I have 30 minutes of free time, an hour of free time, to respond to comments, make my pinned comment, and get down to business with the rest of the back half of the upload, which I think is going to help make you more of a successful YouTuber, which it should be your goal. You know, if you're wanting to make videos, you want to be successful at it. So I think the uh, private option is going to help you guys out. I think you're going to like it. Okay guys, so now we're back in business and you'll see I have the one video that I've uploaded from my camera roll and the one video that I have uploaded from the computer. They are both on YouTube, just not live. They are set to private so they have zero views and it shows locked instead of public like these other videos here. So now what I'm going to do is show you how I finalize these videos before I take them and put them on the website. Description, thumbnail, monetization and then also the end screen, like what pops up at the very end of the video, like subscribe or check out other videos. So let's focus on that for a moment. Let's say this video is the one I just uploaded and I'm gonna post this one right now. I go into the video manager, which is the tab I'm on, and then I hit info and settings. It takes me to where I can manage the settings for this video, meaning select the thumbnail, title, all those things. But one of the first things I might do is go ahead and hop over to the notes app and I will get my title. I will select my title, I'll copy it, I have that ready, come back over to YouTube, I get, rid of, I get rid of the generated title that it has for me, and I post in my title. Boom. Now what about my description? Everything else in this note is my description. So I go ahead and I copy everything except for the, uh, the header there. I have my description. I now paste that. Um, it is po now it's pasted on here. So here's my description. Title, description is now finished. Now. Let's come over here to thumbnail. It's gonna generate you three options for thumbnails right off the bat, but it also gives you the ability to select a custom thumbnail, and that's always what you wanna do. You wanna make a custom thumbnail that you've edited, so we'll go to photo library, and this will be where you have edited your thumbnail. And so let's say it was, uh, let's just use my last video's thumbnail, and uh, I believe the actual size is too large, so sometimes, Sometimes this may happen. You select a thumbnail or a picture from your camera roll, and I'm assuming it's going to give the same error code it did yesterday. And so it's saying try again. This will happen to you from time to time. Your file is not an image or it is too big. So here's what happened and how you can adjust that. You can go to try again, photo library, recents, and you can use that same photo, but you can choose the size. So I select that and I want to hit large because actual size was too big. So I'm gonna hit large, and that always seems to do the trick for me. Now I hit done, and it should work. It has, yep, perfect, so there we go. Now we have that custom thumbnail, but it is uh, sized just right. Now let me show you guys how I put text, etc., on my thumbnails and get them for the videos. 
By the way, obviously it's some of my first types of videos like this, so go ahead and share this if you think it could help somebody you know or if they're wanting to get into YouTube. And also, I feel like I'm just showing the screens this whole time. It's almost bugging me. Uh, so uh, that's just how it's gotta be. I'm showing you the process I use on a day-to-day -day basis. I don't think many people are sharing this, so uh, yeah, that's just my take on it. I wanna go ahead and get you guys wrapped up and get you uploading videos and starting your channels and starting to make money, so let's talk more about this. Guys, we are just about finished, but there's a couple more things I like to do. So I hit monetization. This is how you start generating income off of your videos. You hit monetize with ads, meaning advertisers may run ads on your videos. And you go over here to save changes and the video would be running ads if this were a video that I were to post. If it were, if it's longer than 10 minutes, it will have ads in between the video as well. So that's just something for you guys to note. If a video is longer than 10 minutes, you can add those ads uh, throughout the video as well, which could generate some more income for those creators. And just about lastly is the end screen. So I come over here and the end screen is what you'll see on a lot of creators videos on YouTube specifically uh, in the last, you know, five, 10, 15 seconds, allowing you to click on the next video or to subscribe to them, you'll see those options. And so there's different presets. So you can hit like use template and there's different templates that you can select from. Like, do you want there to just be one video suggested plus the subscribe logo? Do you want there to be uh, two videos? Do you want there to be two videos but on different corners? And you can move these things around, but these are the presets. So I believe I generally use this one right here, which is two videos. And you can select the specific videos you want recommended at the end of each upload, or you can allow YouTube to select them for you. And I'll go into that here in a second, but I already got mine preset. And so what I do is I actually go to import from video, which is import from one of my previous uploads. And if you've never imported any, or if you've never uploaded anything, you would not have that if you've never done this. So uh, for me, all of mine are the same and they all start during like the last 15 seconds and show two recommended videos plus that subscribe button. So I always just click the most recent upload because they're, they're all the same. And then I hit import. And what it's doing is it's importing the template from that video. So here it's asking what you want the elements to be, meaning what you want displayed at the end of your video. And for me, I always have the same. I have the best for viewer recommendation and the most recent upload. So if you guys are watching today's video, you're gonna see the last video I made as the most recent upload at the end of this video being recommended. And if you are new to the channel or uh, you don't watch videos too often or what have you, and uh, there's also a best for viewer. So based on other videos you've watched, Watched is going to be a recommendation from my channel up next for you. And then there's also going to be the subscribe to Weston Smith on here as well. You could actually be very specific about it and you could say that you want uh, the uh, a specific video. You can choose the specific video you want to be shown afterwards and that's when you could select let's say the second video in that playlist or let's say if you have a theme throughout your videos and this one's like uh, gym and the next like this one's gym and fitness and working out the last one was food well the thing is you might want to show people who are watching gym stuff a specific gym upload and so you could actually put specific videos recommendations at the end of your video for them. And lastly, what you have to do before you get out of this page is you have to hit save. You have to save your changes. So now that's saving. Now I have my end screen all set up for this video and I would go back to info and settings and I have everything saved and dialed in now, if I'm not mistaken. We have the title, we have the description, we have the tags, which once again are preset. You can preset these and then leave them alone for future videos. We're still set to private and we have our custom thumbnail taken care of and also we have our end screen. So that covers all bases are really low at this point all we need to do now is I could choose any time of day to now make this public you would go to public and then all you would go is down here to publish Oops, sorry and the video would go live but I'm not gonna do that because obviously this is not the video that I'm making today I am making the video from the footage I'm shooting right now but that is how you would upload the video and start making money but let me talk to you about the money part Okay, now we've got our video uploaded and we can kind of just have fun kick back a little bit and talk about uh, maybe making a little income with YouTube, which for me was never really on the agenda in the beginning. I think, you know, the idea of creating an income around something you love, your passion, no matter what you want to make these YouTube videos for is fantastic. I don't think there's any better type of money to be made, right? But the thing that intrigued me the most was using my creativity and making videos and hopefully then people watching and loving the, the, the content, the videos that I can create uh, without stuttering, ideally. So with that being said, I started this channel. It was actually, it used to be called 3GS Drum Videos, which I think if you still share my channel, that's what it's titled. 
I literally started this channel making drum covers filmed entirely on the iPhone 3GS when that was still, that was like the second or third iPhone, I guess it would be. And uh, that was the quality of my videos. And they sucked. They sucked, let me tell you. The editing sucked. I was using a Roland electronic drum kit. Then I got into like some moto vlogs. And then, uh, and then I started seeing these fishing videos. And I didn't know that anybody was making money with these fishing videos on YouTube. But uh, it turns out there's some people who are doing okay out there, right? So what I first had seen was the challenge. I sucked at fishing, I wanted to get better at fishing, and I started making fishing videos because I had seen some other YouTubers make fishing look so much cooler than I had ever imagined. I remember fishing when I was younger with the bobber and the live worms and blah, and I didn't like to touch the fish, and it, it, it suddenly became from that disliking fishing to after a while you realize there's money to be made and we can talk about that. I don't want to go too much into my story. I want to give you guys the value you came here for. So to start making money on YouTube, I believe to actually monetize your channel, you have to have 4,000 watch hours and 1,000 subscribers. So that initial launch can be pretty tough. You know, getting off the ground, starting from zero can be fairly tough. But the thing is, it's, it all takes consistency and most, not all, but most of these big time YouTubers that you see don't have that success overnight, but they've been putting in the time and posting for years before they get to where they're at, to where they're making uh, a great living off of their YouTube channels and then uh, other endorsements, which we'll talk about. So you have to understand time behind the wheel is a big factor. Uh, a lot of the guys that I look up to, specifically within the types of videos I create that are doing fantastic, they've actually been making videos, you know, four, five, six, seven years. The thousand subscribers will come faster than you know it if you really put your head down, get to work, and start creating some great videos. Just thinking about entertainment for your community or providing value. You know, if you're providing useful information or being super funny or entertaining, then I think you have a channel, no matter what type of content you're trying to create within it. So those requirements to get monetized, that's just for the YouTube AdSense, the Google AdSense uh, paycheck. And so for me, I still don't make a killing off of that. I, I make a couple hundred to a few hundred bucks a month right at this current point in time at like 14 and a half thousand subscribers. It can change overnight. One video can make you a thousand bucks. One minute video can make you multiple thousands of dollars once you start getting those higher views depending on your CPM, uh, which I'll talk about in another video, which is essentially how much you make per thousand views. But uh, you can make a lot of money off of these YouTube videos. It's crazy to think that there's a lot of content creators out there who could make one video a day that generates them a thousand dollars and they made 30 grand that month and then there's plenty of creators who make more than one thousand dollars off of a video let's not be blind and there's plenty of creators who do not make much but a hundred bucks or a couple hundred bucks every single month a uh, channel like mine that's only one stream of income though for me the first way I started making money was through Amazon affiliate marketing this is not that video, I'm gonna make that video soon, but through the Amazon links in my description, if you go down into my description, you'll see I have recommended rods, reels, camera gear, etc. If it's an Amazon link, I earn a percentage when you buy through those links. Uh, it varies depending on what the product is as to how much of a percentage you'll get, but I remember the first time I made a, a fair amount of money off of it was when I did my Scorpion, my Shimano Scorpion DC first impressions video. I wasn't monetized when I made that video, I hadn't monetized my channel yet, but I made money through Amazon affiliate because I recommended that reel and I said you can check it out in the description below and so people who bought the reel through that description I believe I made $17 anytime somebody bought that reel it was a two hundred and seventy dollar reel before tax maybe needless to say many people had bought that reel and that video or specifically that fishing reel had paid for itself just through the sales on Amazon affiliate marketing I'd have to go back and look at it if I'm not mistaken video influencers they're the ones who actually showed me that. The guy's name is Sean Connell. I've watched his video so many times on Amazon affiliate marketing when I was first getting used to it. There's a lot to it and he simplifies it much better than I could in today's video. I'm, I'll put his video down in the description in case you're curious about Amazon affiliate marketing. It's an opportunity for smaller channels to make a full-time income a lot faster uh, depending on the type of videos you make and the products you recommend through the Amazon. You'll soon realize if you're quick in Amazon affiliate marketing for the money, it's not going to pan out. You're going you're gonna to come off as a salesman it's gonna sound terrible. You're not gonna do your subscribers any good. I was truly recommending a product, the Shimano Reel specifically, that I loved, thought was insane, over the top, and I said, look, if you just wanna check it out, it's in the description for you. And if they bought it, great, and if they didn't buy it, great. I didn't care, I just put it down there. And to my amazement, people had started buying it, leaving great feedback and comments on how they had purchased it through that link. They loved the reel, and so that is the type of transaction you're looking for through Amazon affiliate marketing. From 2,000 subscribers on, I was already starting to generate some income through YouTube, essentially because of Amazon affiliate marketing. 
Well, that really covers the YouTube and Google AdSense paycheck that you'll get from your views and also the Amazon affiliate program. Now we can talk about uh, another way I've monetized, which is brand deals and partnerships. And uh, specifically, I've gotten a lot through Instagram. Uh, so what has happened with me is I'm building Instagram and YouTube and, and multiple other social platforms. You'll find it linked in the description, of course. I've had a lot of companies reach out to me and be willing to pay me, you know, between, lately it's been, you know, $200 and $300 for a video plus uh, product. So whatever their product is that they are representing, I would test it out, see if I like it, then be willing to make that video over it for a couple hundred bucks. A channel my size might already be making a little bit of income off the views from it. Plus you're getting the free product, which could amount for anywhere from zero to hundreds of dollars. So really you got to think about that aspect of it. Working with Yakima, we've got a $1,500 roof rack on our Subaru that they've provided for free. Working with uh, companies like Mystery Tackle Box and Catch Co, they have great incentives. And Anytime we get new customers for Mystery Tackle Box, we get a little kickback and rightfully so. It's a fantastic service that I love to use for my fishing. And so there's opportunities to make money, but I just want to let you guys know, the larger following you get, the more subscribers, specifically the more views you get, the more valuable you are to these companies that are wanting to have you represent their products. So whether it's you do fishing videos and they want you to test out their uh, fishing reel, be a young lady focused on makeup videos, you could be a dude focused on cars, you could be, these advertisers are willing to send you those makeup products or send you these uh, vehicle parts or send you all these different things to go along with your videos on top of paying you. So you have to think about that side of it as well. It's been fantastic for us so far and we're just getting started in my eyes and so I can't wait to see what the future of YouTube holds for us. And by us, I mean me and you. It's so much more than the income, which we're only just starting to scrape the surface. I can't wait to show you guys much more in the future. And uh, let me know what type of videos you want to see after this. Of course, I'm going to make my fishing content. I'm not going to stop the fishing vids, but I uh, would love to know what you'd like to see more of over here on the channel, what questions this might spike, and I would love to make a video covering some of those questions in the future. So thank you guys so much for watching. Let's start making some YouTube videos and creating a little bit of an income around it. Why not, huh? Catch you all in the next one.